Hey folks, welcome back. This is DJ and this video is sponsored by RenderPool. Get your renders done 20 times faster with RenderPool. So as you know, in my YouTube channel in the community section, I did mention that I'd be doing a video on a rendering service and RenderPool is that rendering service. And what's really awesome about them is that I have been working with them a little bit offline to help them develop some of the ways that their render system works. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go through all of the ways that you can basically use this cloud-based rendering system to get your files ready to upload, upload the files, get them rendered, and all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is once you have your project done, like this one right here that we did for a recent video tutorial series, I will put the link down in the video description so you could check it out. Once we're ready to go and we have everything set to what we want, um, and it's important to know that this is exclusively Cycles and ProRender rendering. So I'm gonna change this over to Cycles and you're gonna wanna do a couple things. You'll want to clean up your unused data blocks and all that kind of stuff. And of course, as with anything, when you want to send out a Blender file, you want to make sure to pack all of your resources. So make sure that you pack your resources before you upload your files. What you'll also want to do is make sure that your projects are zipped. So you can see here that I have a project file that you might be familiar with. If you're used to my channel, I have this Apple Splash animation that you can see on the screen here. And for this one, what we are going to be doing is taking the fluid mesh and the project itself and zipping it together. I use 7-Zip, which I'll just show you briefly, is right here. You can download it. It's very easy. And basically, you want to make sure that you zip your files up. And inside there, you can see I have my fluid mesh and I have my project file. And this works with scenes like the fireball animation that I did previously. All you'd have to do is just make sure that you have that mesh saved in and zipped together when you do your upload. You'll also want to make sure that in your compositing tab, if you have anything in here, like let's say you had some sort of hue correct or something like that, you had a whole bunch of stuff here, you want to make sure that you link that all to your composite node before you save your file and export it. Because if you don't and you just have the image going straight to your compositor and you don't have it going through all of the other stuff here, it's not going to output your final composited image. So make sure that you have all of that set up properly for your nodes before you send it to the farm. So when you're actually ready to upload and render out your file, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go to the render pool website, which the link will be down in the video description for you to check out. And you can see here it says render 20 times faster with no initial setup, which is really great. It's a very easy browser based system. And they have basically a whole bunch of GPUs that can render out many, many frames at the same time. So you're not basically just waiting for frame, you know, one, frame two, and just frame after frame rendering for days. This will get it all done really, really quickly. Now you can see here that you could start a free trial, which basically gives you 20 bucks of credit, which it will have a watermark, but I do recommend that you do this because you can test out your render scenes. So once you're actually ready to render out your file and you have your login, you'll basically come into this interface right here. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You got all of your stuff here that you need to take a look at. And you can see I've already done some things with testing. As I told you before, you can check all your jobs here with the running and pause and failed and all that kind of stuff. And you can check out all your payments and accounts. So what's really cool about this setup is that you actually don't need to have what sometimes in studios or even on your own personal projects, if you're using a render system, you might need to use some like server client managers or some other stuff like that. But what's really great about this service is that it's all done directly in the internet browser. So you really don't have to worry about having to deal with all of the extra costs or having to make sure that you have that. And because of that, it does make it a lot more affordable than some of the other options that are out there. So to upload the file, all we got to do is just click this button right here and you can drag and drop it right into the browser window, but I'm going to navigate to it, open it up. And over here, you can see all the file information, press this button right here to upload the file and we can see it getting started right there. Now we just uploaded our scene here, but what we want to do first is just talk really quick about the purchase points here. So you can go up to the purchase points here and you can see here that there's monthly plans and there's also the points plans down here. And there is a way that you can have your account set to a point-based credit system so you don't have to buy more credits than you need, or you can just register for an unlimited monthly plan where you can have unlimited usage on the GPU power with no concern about extra purchasing of credits or anything like that. So whatever plan will end up working for you, go ahead and select those if you're purchasing right now. Now that this has been 
completed with uploading, we can actually start our render. So now that we're in here, we can actually set our render settings and you can see that we have CPU, we have GPU, which is in beta, which I'm actually working with them a little bit on. And if you're a studio that uses Blender 2.93, because you haven't updated to Blender 3.0 yet, you can go ahead and use that. But let's just do CPU for now. And you can see here that we can set our sample count. So whatever you did your test renders here, you can set it. And I'm just gonna put this at like 200 or something like that. I'm not gonna do too much. And you can see that we have a selection of EXRs, PNGs, MPEG-4, and all of this sort of stuff. Now, if you know me, I really like to use just EXRs and PNGs and then put it all together in a timeline and then render that out for my video file. But it's really up to you and what you wanna do there. You can set your frames here. So let's say we're gonna do frame one. And just to show you how this works, we're gonna do frame 20. In the end, I'll show you what the result actually is of the entire render. And you can see down here in the bottom, you can purchase your points if you don't have enough, but it gives you the different resolutions. You can see right here, it says this resolution is only for consumption point estimation. So whatever you actually set in your file, this will not override it. This is just to make sure. And if we did set this to something that I like to do, which is 4K or something like that, you can see that the estimated charges increase or decrease according to what that is. Once you set all of your values in here, you can actually go ahead and start your render. And once we press this button down here, it's gonna go ahead and start rendering out our frames. And if you have something like 250 or 500 frames or something like that, you'll see it populate all the way down the list here and you'll be able to watch as this is rendered, the percentage will go up and once it's done, we'll be able to download the rest of our files. So you can see here that the render has basically stopped. We've finished up and we used this much of our MRP. Now let's go ahead and click this button up here that says to view the file. And we can just download the file right here. It gives you all the information that you need to know. Download this right here. And once we have it in there, we can just take a look at what our render results are. So there it is. We can open that up and you can see here that the naming convention basically just takes whatever your project file was and you can open up these images and take a look at that and check them out. So this is what it looks like right here when you get done with your final render, and it really is that simple. Make sure that you try out the service yourself by going to the Render Pool website and clicking the Start Now button, getting your free trial started, and check out this really awesome rendering service. Thank you so much, Render Pool, for sponsoring this video and helping out the channel. And Go ahead and leave some comments down below in the video description and let me know how your trial went. And I will see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.